your back. 1877-532-5797. Exhale Friday. Let's go to John in Charlotte, North Carolina, WAUG 750. John? Hey, how you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? Not bad, sir. Not bad. Uh, I had a question for you, sir. With the, given the trend nowadays uh, with a lot of uh, cities and towns uh, arming teachers, which I personally was uh, do you think that could ever be implemented nationwide? That that we would do what? Implement uh, teachers, allowing teachers to clear, which I personally think would prevent a lot of these shootings from escalating farther than they did. Why would that prevent it? Well, I mean, a gun-free zone is the best place to shoot a lot of people. Common sense says if I have a gun pointing back at you, you're not going to shoot as many people. I well, still well, say, tell I me, gun tell on me, me. Which, which, which incident that has happened that if a teacher had a gun would have avoided the incident. Well, we don't, I mean, we don't know until... So then how can you we, say that that would lead to that? When you well, had this say, how can you say it wouldn't? Oh, so, well, well, we could say let's uh, use anything and, and, and try to disprove it. You make actions yeah. based on some reasoning that it would lead to a result. First of all, first yes, of all, the, in the Parkman shooting, this young man hit the fire uh, 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 during a fire drill had an automatic weapon. If every teacher in the school had a gun, unless they were walking around with AR-15s, they couldn't fire back. They didn't know he was coming. You had armed guards outside the school, and they wouldn't even those go were in. Cowards, those were cowards. Well, how do you know teachers are not going to be cowards? Are you now going to teach only after well, people that? It, it, is, uh, I, it is not, not going to be required it's if you are a would like to, I think you should be allowed to carry out. And if say, you would like to, if it's optional, I, I, I if it is optional, it. John, it, if it is optional, then what is the point? Because, uh, so now you're saying that it would only possibly prevent shootings if they happen to come upon the teacher that optionally got a gun? That's not no, a solution. I'm not saying it's, I'm saying common sense says if you have more guns pointing back at the man with, the bad guy with the gun, the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. No, the only, only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is make it very difficult for him to be able to get a gun. That's but how you stop it. It's difficult to get a gun in criminal. It is not, it is, clearly it is not difficult to get a gun with all these guns out here. That is clearly criminals not Criminals don't true. follow laws. Criminals no, it's not about, no, criminals don't follow laws, but gun manufacturers and gun distributors would have to be enforced. And criminals yes, cannot get what is yes, not available. Well, so Thank you for your call. I mean, yeah. Let's go to Robert in Chicago, WVON 1690, home of the Governor Cliff Kelly. Robert? Yes, man. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you. Uh, I, uh, we're looking at these shootings that are going on, but I think Darnell mentioned that the... Uh, the urban communities are not experiencing as much as the these uh, mass shootings that are going on in schools. Well, they may and, not be uh, in the schools, but they're certainly feeling the violence. They're just not getting the attention. Oh, absolutely. I'll give you what's going on in Chicago since 2012. There have been 6,459 shootings. Right. This year alone, there were 890 up to this past weekend. There were seven killed, 12 wounded. And uh, I think there were uh, 12, seven, uh, nine murdered in that school shooting today in Texas. So that's a walk in the park uh, compared to what's going on in Chicago. And we don't, uh, we're not looking at uh, shootings that are going on in Boston or Philadelphia or other cities where, especially in our community, uh, where, you know, and we need to connect the dots because in 1971, Nixon declared that we're going to drop guns and drugs in the black community and want to disintegrate. That's a, a direct connection, a link to White House terrorism that we're still experiencing today. Uh, um, Reagan brought in the war on drugs. You know, they, they dropped the uh, cocaine over in L.A., treated the Bloods and the Crips. That rivalry, and then he used that blueprint 
that's spreading across the country. That's why today we have crack babies walking around, uh, guns, uh, automatic weapons that are so uh, relevant and frequent in our community to today's mass murders. So until we look at the psychological and the genetic component to how Europe was emptied out and they, and they sent thugs here in uh, Australia and other areas where these people are spread out. And this is all in, uh, endemic of what's going on, going back to history. Yeah. Thank you, McCall. All right. Thank you, Robert. Raleigh, North Carolina on Sirius XM 126. Sam, Sam, you're keeping it real with Al Shout. Hey, uh, thanks, for, thanks for taking my call. Uh, <clears throat> here's my take on, on this major problem we have in our country now, and I think it's corporate lobbying. Um, basically, you have, it doesn't matter the industry, whether it's gun industry, oil industry, the military industrial complex, pharmaceuticals, you have all these lobbyists that are basically having, you know, congressmen and senators literally bending over out. Uh, the bottom line is it's not we the people, it's we corporate America. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's basically, we need to take our country back and that's the only way you're gonna clean up the cesspool. I'll give you two examples. You have the NRA is basically the pimps for, for the gun manufacturers who basically just protecting a multi-billion dollar industry. Then you have, okay, well, here's an example, and it just boggles my mind out. And you, you, you probably, you know, you hear what I have to say, you'll probably say, you know what, this guy has a point. You don't hear anything about the pharmaceutical industry's uh, opiate crisis because of corporate lobbying, number one, you don't hear it on Fox News, you don't hear it on CNN, you don't hear it on the truth about it, the over-distribution in the black market. Give me an example. Five distributors made over $450 billion, if I remember the number, $450-something billion in 2016, okay? That is huge. Those are just the distributors. That's not the manufacturer themselves on the opioid crisis. And what do you hear from the right? That it's the drug dealer, it's the drug user. But basically, it's the problem is the manufacturer. They know they're over-distributing. And the distributors know they're over distributing. It's all about the money. And the biggest problem in this country now is corporate lobbying. Okay? I don't know what the answer is. Maybe we need to revamp. Okay, like Trump said, he's going to clean the swamp. He yeah, hasn't cleaned nothing. Okay, the bottom line is you have corporate lawyers going in there on behalf of all these corporations making billions and billions of dollars. They write legislation for the whole country, and we just have to sit back like a bunch of sitting ducks and fools, which I'm not, and many people are like yourself. I listen to your show. I listen to others on Urban View. I like the station because you guys are real with the points, okay? And, and, you know, I don't listen to fake news. And to, to me, it doesn't matter the channel today. I'm not saying CNN is fake news, but a lot of it is just washed down, okay? The real facts are always you have to find it through independent news or people who do investigative reports. Uh, there is just so much going on that the American people are blind to. I think we need to wake up, fight back, and the, 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 the real hoodlums in this country is corporate America, the big wigs, the multi-billionaires who basically are calling all the shots and basically sticking it to all of us at the, at the mercy, at the, at the sake of all these kids dying in schools. 64,000 people died last year on, on opioid, opioid uh, use alone, fentanyl, and, and all these drugs that are hitting the black market. And that's where the problem is, the black market. And no one talks about that. Well, you predicted it. You're right. I've got to say this guy has a point. Thank you for your call. And I does have a point. I think that that is why, uh, and I thank him for his call. That is why I say voting is one option that we've not maximized. Because lobbyists can't lobby who we do not elect. And if we start punishing those that are in office by unelecting them, the new elected that stand up for what it is that we want and what is in the interest 
of the people, starting with preserving lives, then they will say, I don't care what lobbyist comes, I can't go against that because I won't be here. Until people understand that they will lose their job, their position, they will not resist the lobby. But a lobbyist can't offer you anything if they know they won't be there because the lobbyists won't be coming to them anymore. We've got to make political examples this year. Let's take a break. We'll be right back. Keeping it real. Shopton right after this. <laughs> Breaking news.